Well, hello everybody, I'm back and I wanted to show you my hack for complex fractions. Now, um, I think you're going to like this because it really simplifies the, the horrible technique that was taught to you in elementary high into a, a one simple move. This one is complex in the top. Over here we're complex in the bottom and in this one we're complex in both the top and the bottom. And I'm going to use these three complex fractions to introduce the technique and then I'm going to jump ahead into the algebra. So now this one is from intermediate algebra and my hack will immediately slice and dice it in no time. In fact you could probably almost do it in your head once you know the hack. This one from college algebra though does not lend itself directly or simply to the hack. Um, and that's because we don't really have a fraction over a fraction. Notice this is a fraction over a fraction but here we have a fraction over two fractions being added together. And so we can't really use the hack to great force. However, the technique behind the hack, the magic behind the hack, is actually the same magic that you use to simplify this. It just extends itself in one layer of complexity and you can solve these. So I'm actually going to solve this problem from College Algebra for you and show you the way the hack extends. It's not a dead end and lends itself to the future. Now, let's get on with this. Here are the first two ones and let me bring in the drawing program and show you the way the hack works. I call it drop the denominator and that's the beauty. If you can memorize this phrase right here, you know all you need to know to solve complex fractions. I'm going to drop the denominator. This, in this case I'm going to drop the 4 into the bottom where it appears as a multiplier and that's all there is to it. Now 3 over 2 times 4 is 3 eighths and we're done. In one step I simplified a complex fraction by simply dropping the denominator. Now here we're complex in the bottom and we want to drop the denominator but where do we drop it? There's nothing below here like there was up above. Well, it's the same game really if you just think that you have to drop it somewhere so you might as well drop it in the top where it appears as a factor. Now does this simplify it all? Uh, yes it does because the 6 goes into the 12 twice and then we simply have the 9 on top. So that's how you drop the denominator when you're complex in the top and the bottom. In the other case is simply a plural situation. Let me show you that. Now I went ahead and I already, uh, what I did was is I parenthesized the, all the quantities because I've been talking about uh, these things as being factors that you're dropping. And when you put parentheses around something it, it uh, immediately catches the eye and makes you think of factors and I wanted to emphasize that in this one. I'm going to drop the denominators using this program here. I'm simply going to lasso it and drop it into the bottom and then I'm going to drop the 5 into the top and essentially we're done. We're no longer comp complex and so we can get rid of the fraction bar in the top and the bottom and, and simply clean this up and look to see if anything simplifies. And I think you could see that nothing is going to cancel, nothing is going to simplify and so all we can do is crunch it out to do the multiplication and we end up with 5 over 18. And that's it, stick a fork in it. Now you could have almost have done this drop the denominators plural without even using a pencil. You could do it in your head. That's how simple it is. Now let's, let's dance ahead here. Let's, let's check it out when we move into uh, the, the more complicated problem that I talked about, the problem from intermediate algebra. Now this looks like a big nasty here. Notice I've already gone ahead and parenthesized a few of the quantities here. And that's because the 3 is going to drop into the top where it has to multiply both of these things, thus the parentheses. And the 6 is going to drop into the bottom where it's going to multiply against this 2y. When we do that dropping, we end up with this. Notice that the 6 has dropped into the bottom and notice that the 3 has dropped into the top. And now we're almost done. All we have to do is simplify. The 3 is going to go into the 6 twice and we're going to have 2 times 2y for 4y. And on top we're simply going to have the quantity x plus 8. And that's it. We're done. Now this is a, a big nasty mean problem that I know a lot of my students who sweat fractions would really be feeling discomfort with. But with drop the denominators it's very simply done. Now I said I was going to show you a bit of the magic behind the scenes. How does drop the denominators work? So let me clear the screen here and bring in another graphic that will show that. So the magic behind drop the denominator. Really this is it. We're just multiplying by 1. 
you know you can multiply it by one and not change the value of anything. I'm going to multiply that complex fraction by fancy form of one, four over four. And what happens here is on top, the fours cancel. And of course, there's nothing to cancel that four multiplication in the bottom. And so it, it persists. And the net effect is when you look at this and this, when you look at this and this, the net effect is that the four has dropped into the bottom. So that's what I did, is I looked at what happened when you multiply by a fancy form of one to get rid of the denominators. Um, what happens is, is that they drop into the corresponding other part of the fraction. And so next was just to find some simple language for that. And the simplest language I could find, and it actually took a long time to come up with this, is drop the denominator. And so what I'm doing here is basically saying, let's rid ourselves of this middle step and just go with what happens when we do it, which is that the denominator gets dropped. So that's the magic behind the drop the denominator. Now, if we flash forward here and we jump into college algebra, we have this situation. Basically, the magic that I use in drop the denominator to cancel away the, the denominator is the same magic that's being used to solve this. Now, I've gone ahead and, and figured out that if I multiply the top by an x, um, this is going to cancel this, this denominator. And of course, the, the x, we have to multiply by a fancy form of 1, so I have to include that x in, the, in my denominator here so that I am multiplying by 1. And then I noticed that I needed to multiply by y because the x would cancel this denominator and this denominator, but this denominator would pers persist. So that's why I put uh, y in here, and of course I had to put it in here to continue to multiply by one. Let me bring in the drawing program and just show the net effect of this. So here's what's happening. We are multiplying by this quantity, and what's gonna happen is on the top, the x is gonna cancel, just like the fours did in that other one. And on top, I'm left with y times the quantity x minus one. Now on the bottom it's a little more complicated, but you can see the, the canceling is going to, going to happen here. When I multiply the quantity xy times this, the y's are going to cancel, and I'm left with simply 6x. And then when we distribute and multiply this next term, the x's are going to cancel, and we're left with simply plus 4y. And the complex fraction no longer exists. Basically I use the same magic that I used with drop the denominator. It's just an extension of it. And that's the beauty of drop the denominator and why I actually made another longer video for educators arguing that they should teach, if you're going to teach magic, you might as well teach the best magic, the magic that gets extended. It, not only is it simpler and, 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 and much quicker and, and less error prone for elementary students, but when you get to the level of college algebra, the thinking simply gets extended. It's the natural progression of things. So, the algebraic progression. So that's drop the denominator. Here is a link to the longer version, 14 minutes for educators. And if you're curious to see how this all ties together, and how I came up with this because of a situation that exists in calculus, watch that. Otherwise, um, I hope it helps. Be talking to you again soon.